Hey guys, we've been making a lot of videos about different neighborhoods within Bali and what their pros and cons are to each one of them. And we thought it'd be a great idea to just talk about our overall impressions of Bali so far. We wanted to talk about what we love about Bali and what we may not like so much about Bali. Let's check it out. One of the things that we love is the nature. It's absolutely wonderful. We're very close to it more than we were in California. Bali is incredibly green. Obviously, it's a tropical island. It's just covered in trees and foliage and so much greenery. And it also has gorgeous beaches and beautiful waterfalls. So it's just got everything you could want. There's a huge variety of natural beauty here because you can go into the jungles and be surrounded by greenery. You can see animals like monkeys. Just a little further, like a couple hours drive and you're on a white sand beach, a couple hours drive and you're on a black sand beach. Mm -hmm. And it's Indian Ocean, it's Bali Sea, huge variety of things to do. You can go hike on mountains, so you can go hike mm -hmm. volcanoes like Mount Batur or Mount Agung. It's a lot of fun if you're really into that. And when we camped, when you're just waking up with the sound of yeah. nature, it was wonderful. Another thing we really love about Bali is the food. It was actually one of the things that I found most surprising when I arrived here. Coming from San Francisco, one of the most culinary cities in the world, when I came to Bali, just the consistent level of high quality, delicious food and a lot of variety really shocked me. Yeah, you can find anything you want, like vegan and non-vegan options, great healthy food restaurants. It's so many options. We get lost sometimes when we're trying to figure out where to eat, especially when we like in Changu or Seminyak. So one of our favorite restaurants is an Italian restaurant that has pizza and pasta. And honestly, it's some of the best pizza and <laughs> pasta I've had in my life. It's really good, yes. And again, variety of cuisines. You can find mm -hmm. any cuisine you wish. You can find Middle Eastern, great Chinese, any kind of Asian cuisines like Japanese, Korean, Indonesian, Malaysian, Thai, so many options. You can find good Russian food here, which is yeah. beautiful. And of course, another huge benefit of the food here is it's extremely affordable. Even the Western options, which are far more pricey than the Warungs, are still much cheaper than you'll find in the States and a lot of the Western countries where this food originates from. And it's still that yeah. top quality, which leads us to our next pro is affordability. Yes, food here is extremely affordable, especially local food. Sometimes it's way cheaper than cook. That's what we found out and that's a huge pro. And another extremely affordable thing here is accommodation. Prices for renting, especially houses, especially if you're doing it for yes. a long term. It's so wonderful. We're living in a big house with three bedrooms and like big kitchen. Yes, it's not the newest one and like infrastructure sometimes a little bit lagging, but we're paying 700 for the huge house. Even if you're just coming for a couple of days, you can find some really incredible accommodations like beautiful villas and places in both the really touristy areas like Changu, Semenya, Kuta. And if you go to some of the more remote places, they still have amazing accommodations like gorgeous villas. One of the nicest we found was like way up in the north. You can find them ranging from as low as $20 per night uh, up to a hundred dollars per night but at a hundred dollars a night you're getting luxury good. yeah you're getting good villa yes yeah with the season like tourist season it might cost a little more in like in the peak but it's still not comparing to u.s prices and it's yeah. n like not even close yeah we were in hawaii last year and yeah. <laughs> we spent so much money yes accommodation is extremely affordable here yes 
transportation here as well on the affordable side of things. You can hire Grab and it will cost just a few dollars to get from point A to point B. I'm reminded of uh, taking Ubers all over in the States. A trip for maybe a 10 minute drive will cost you $20, right? That's like as cheap as it gets sometimes. Whereas here... It's gonna be 30,000 IDR, which oops. is two dollars. Yeah, it's unbelievably cheap to get around using the rideshare services here, which is fantastic. Also, if you're choosing to rent, we rent a scooter. It costs us about $85 a month. And gas here is actually really cheap too. And last but not least, and probably one of the most favorite thing and why we actually stay here for that long is people. Balinese people are the most open and friendly people I've met in my life. And I traveled a lot before. With a lot of friendly, open people, you get this friendly, open vibe around you. That's absolutely wonderful. One of the most telling experiences about people in Bali that I encountered was when I realized how I interact with people differently than how Balinese people interact. Growing up in a Western culture, I learned to be very cautious around people, have sort of barrier. You want to protect yourself and be careful of somebody's trying to get something out of you. And this is very common. I mean, it's not just in American culture. I know it's in many Western cultures. And one of the earlier interactions that we had when we arrived was we were asked out by a band that we had gone seeing and we didn't have a vehicle and they just offered us their bike. Literally handed us the keys, said, follow us. Yeah. We went to a local Warung. We were Who does that? Nobody does that in Western countries. Yeah. I'm not going to give you my keys from my car just to follow me. What if you don't know how to ride it? Like yeah. there are so many questions in your head in this moment and we're like, that's just on another level of yeah. human interaction. And we had such a great time. Of course, they were super sweet. And of course, we took the bike and followed them and everything. And it was all perfectly wonderful. But inside, I was like, how is this normal? It just doesn't feel normal. We've had many experiences like that since. You know, we've been invited to people's houses. We've been invited to weddings. To weddings. <laughs> people that we just met. You know, we don't know them like on a personal level, yeah. but they're so open and they're so trusting and they're so warm. And I also think that they actually learn how to get people's vibe like really yes. quickly so that they know who they can trust because they just seem so warm and welcoming. It's been life-changing for us. Very inspired and trying to change our mindset towards people. And another thing that surprised me extremely no one ever in my life but my friends and family ask me, are you happy? We've met a few strangers asking, are you happy? And I was like, who asked this question? It's immediately taking your guards off. You immediately feel welcomed and you immediately feel like person cares about you. Yeah, and this comes from everyone almost and just mm -hmm. people all over the place who genuinely take interest in you. It's so different than what I'm yeah. used to. And that's that's just the favorite thing here in Bali. Yeah, that's, that's what made us fall in love so much with this place. So having mentioned all these things that we love so much about Bali, there are a few things that you know aren't ideal that we do want to take note of. First one probably will be Insects, if you know the into them, <laughs> they everywhere. They around you and we're already not paying attention. And how a sense, which I would be freaking out in California, or we're not paying attention to occasional bees, but like centerpieces or wasps, they can like freak you out if like mm -hmm. the huge bee like that flying into your house and you're like, eh, I don't wanna deal with you. Even those we've gotten so much more accustomed yes. to. I yes. remember when we first arrived, we saw one of these things and we were like running for the hills. We were like, get inside. And now like just yeah. a week ago, one flew inside <laughs> of our house and was just zipping around and we we're just kind of like, uh, let's just wait for it to leave. The only insect that we cannot get accustomed to is mosquitoes. Ugh. They everywhere, yeah. despite on the fact that twice a week we're getting fumigation, they're still everywhere. The traps don't really work against them. Doesn't matter how 
how do we try mm -hmm. they biting you and the biggest thing is they carry dengue fever and it can be very risky we were extremely lucky not to get it within mm -hmm. all this time but we know cases and people who got dengue fever and friend of our friend even died from it you know it is something that can happen and mosquitoes do carry it so keep them in mind if you come here if you have any weird symptoms yes. you better go to clinics and like just keep an eye on your health another con of living here is the internet and infrastructure isn't exactly like the equivalent of a western or like a japan or yeah. south korea or something it's a little bit on the weaker end the internet specifically we've had difficulties with uh, trying to upload videos or even sometimes just streaming yeah and it gets annoying because you're just not used to it yeah and there are places that supposedly have faster internet speeds but we know it's hard to find we've looked for it we've been to co-working places and all of the internet that we've experienced here has really been on the slow end nothing's been impressive to us. Uh, in addition to the infrastructure, road infrastructure can sometimes be a little sketchy. They've actually paved the roads recently. A lot of roads have improved, but there are still many with cracks or gravel, so that can be a little bit sketchy. We've mentioned in some of our past videos, sidewalks are a rarity. You have to really go to the high traffic touristy areas to find sidewalks, and even then there's like cars that'll just park along it. It can be a little bit jarring the first time you come here. It takes some time to adjust because at the beginning we were like, uh, how can we cross the road here? <laughs> yes. It's like everyone moving and it was intimidating. You just have to be very careful and always on your toes about walking around. And another thing is uh, overall walkability. If you live a little further from center of tourist areas, you need to drive everywhere, even to the nearest grocery store. Without scooter, it's really hard to move around. Yeah, that's definitely another con. Just getting around in general. If you're in one of the Western countries, you can actually like take public transit. And of course there's ride shares all over the place. And cities are also very walkable. They have nice infrastructure for walking. So getting around can be a little trickier. You really do need to either have a scooter or take a ride share. And even taking a ride share can take a very long time because traffic can be a problem. Mm -hmm. And another like very miscellaneous thing, some of the stuff are more expensive here, like uh, feminine products or sunscreens, cheese. And my personal struggle is wine. Wine is more expensive here, uh, especially European, American, and Australian wine. And we tried local wine, it's not bad, but it's not as good as, like I'm a little wine snob, so it's, it's my personal struggle. Just what I mentioned before, we wrap it up. Despite all those like minor gripes, they really are outweighed tremendously by all of the pros that we've talked about. We love Bali so much. It's, it's really near and dear to our hearts and we plan on staying here for a long time. It's been wonderful times and I think we have even more wonderful times ahead of us. We're gonna keep making videos about Bali and if you wanna know more, stick around and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment and we will get back to you. See you in the next video. See you in the next video.